Hello everyone, I'm Chris Perrins and I'd like to show you today about one of the steps I use in planning a painting and that is uh, making a color wheel. Normally you might see a color wheel made with little patches of color but I have kind of a different way of doing it. I like to save the backs of old paintings um, or scraps of paper and uh, they're perfect for doing this kind of experimentation. So I'm going to use this one today. And I'm going to be planning a painting that's uh, comprised of a lot of rocks and texture. So the colors that I'm going to be using are earth colors uh, of raw sienna and burnt sienna. Those two are Windsor Newton. Also, uh, Rose Matter Genuine in Windsor Newton. That's another one that's an earth tone. And then in the um, Mission line, I like to use French Ultramarine Deep. So I start out by making kind of a big bagel shape in water, just clear water, using my one inch flat brush. And I put a good deal of water on there and let it soak in pretty well. You can see that I've got some other crud on this paper, but that won't matter, as you will see. So I get a good amount of that on there, let it soak in. Add a little more here. Okay, then I'm going to put a little dab of each one of these colors. I'm going to start with raw sienna, which is my yellow. I usually only use three colors in my paintings to start out, and then I may add other colors as needed, but I usually start with a red, yellow, and blue. For this color wheel, I'm also adding the um, burnt sienna, which could be a red or it could be a yellow. It's kind of in between. Let's see, I'll put on the Rose Matter Genuine next. Swish off my brush a little bit. And I'm taking them right out of the tube here and putting them on here. Okay, I like to plan my colors in advance. I find that if I have to choose from everything on my palette as I'm creating a painting, it's kind of overwhelming. So I really enjoy having those decisions made ahead of time. This is the French Ultramarine Deep. And I'm just gonna put the Burnt Sienna in here as well. Now you might think that any Burnt Sienna will do, but I have found that Windsor Newton Burnt Sienna gives me the blacks and grays and browns that I want to get. And I've experimented with about five other um, Burnt Siennas, other brands, and I'm just not able to get the, the range that I want to get. I often get kind of greenish colors with, with some of the other brands. So I've, I've really relied on um, Windsor Newton French, um, not French Ultra, but um, Burnt Sienna. I think most of my paintings have that color in it. Okay, now I'm gonna just let this mix on the paper as we so often do in our paintings. And rather than working with just little patches of color, this gives you the true accurate effect of mixing on the paper. And you're able to see if you're getting uh, the secondary colors and the tertiary colors that you'd hope for, and you might get some happy surprises. Sometimes you get some unhappy surprises. Uh, I will find often that a new yellow does not want to mix on the paper and it just lays there in a lump and is very dead and um, won't move. For these purposes, I'm looking for granulation because of the rocky texture in my painting. It's nice if the granulation can do some of the work for me and give me some of the texture. This is turning out kind of pale. I'm gonna add a little more of the French Ultra here just to make sure I've got enough of that in there to give a true true idea of what's gonna be happening. You can see that this isn't any highly controlled or fancy system. It's just a quick test that could save you hours of heartache later by putting something down on your painting without knowing for sure what it's going to do first. Okay, so I like to 
roll it around a little bit, maybe run a, that bead around the outside, get it, get a good mixture. It's fun to watch it run too. Okay, and I give it a little shake like this, and what that does is um, encourage the granulation, and it causes the pigment to slide off the hills in the paper and settle into the valleys. And the next thing you need to be sure to do is to label everything and put the year on it. I like to put the year on because on occasion, a, a paint company, pigment company, may change their, grant, their formulation and by putting on the year, you'll know whether you're working with the old paint or the, or the new formulation. And sometimes things will fade too, and that's good to know. Okay, well, you can see that's uh, starting to mix together now. I've got one here that's still kind of wet that I did a few minutes ago. This is already labeled. I've got Windsor Newton. Rose Matter Genuine, Windsor Newton Raw Sienna, Mission French Ultra Deep, and Windsor Newton Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to mark it. This was done in 2021. 11, 2021. Okay. I have another one here that's completely dry. And you can see my reference photo. You can see this dried a lot lighter. And uh, the reference photo that I'm going to be using is the one with all the Rocky Mountain texture and colors in it. And I felt that these tones in particular really worked well and will help to give me that atmosphere and mood that I'm going for. Some other ones that I tried before I settled on this um, arrangement of four colors are some of these. And as you can see, they're not quite, this, this one's close. This is raw sienna, burnt sienna and French Ultra, but it's missing that Rose Matter Genuine. That's why I'm working with four colors now, because it just needed that true pinky red. Um, but the rest of these, are they're just not working for me. I might use them in some other painting at some point, but for now, um, I'll just save them and see if they inform a uh, painting in the future. I do save all of my color wheels in a book which I'll show you here. This is just a sketchbook. Just a, you know, a typical sketchbook you get at the art supply store. These are all uh, more recent color wheels that I've made that are waiting to get filed. I haven't gotten around to putting them in the book yet, but they're here ready for me to um, look at when I'm trying to plan a painting. And then I go back, oh, I don't know, probably as far as 2004, 2003, something like that. Sometimes I'll make a note of what painting I used these color wheels for. And uh, it comes in really handy. Uh, here's a workshop that I did with Nita Engel. And I've got the palette that she recommended um, and color wheels. These circles are, are testing to see if those are liftable while they're damp. And so they I went over those with a light, nearly dry, brush and that lifted up some of the pigment. Other times I'll make these uh, dots to see if I can get dark enough with those three colors in order to you know get my darkest darks in the painting. This is when I first started working with M. Graham. And other times I'm just checking for uh, granulating properties using different brands of paint and uh, trying to get granulation. This page over here really Shows, the, shows up the granulation and the um, different burnt siennas and burnt umbers going back to 2009. So anyway, um, that's what this book is for. It really saves me time when I'm ready to get going on a painting. I can look to see what might help me uh, communicate a mood or an atmosphere. This was a, a painting of flamingos that I was testing out different reds and oranges and seeing, you know, otherwise there's try it on your painting you're always um, playing catch up. If it doesn't work, then you have to lift it and do it again. And here I'm experimenting with blues over here, trying to record all of the different blues that I had because I was doing some uh, tropical water. 
So that's what I like to do to start my painting. That's, that's a big part of my planning process. I hope that that's helpful to you, and uh, I do encourage you to use it when you're getting ready to start painting. Thanks.